actuator. This is a pneumatic actuator. And we will disassemble this actuator. But if you note, it has a spring. And you also see here a little, like a little measuring device. It lets you know whether the valve is open or closed, depending on the stem position. A pneumatic actuator uses a compressible fluid, a gas, to operate it. So whenever you're looking at hydraulics, it's a liquid fluid, but in pneumatics, it uses a compressible fluid or gas fluid. And I'm going to disassemble this so you are able to look inside and uh, be able to, to see the inner workings of a, a pneumatic actuator. We looked at the gate valve earlier and you were able to look at the hand wheel well, this takes the place of a hand wheel. Instead of having a threaded uh, stem, I can use a smooth stem. It just has to be connected to this stem. Now, mind you, this actuator is a lot smaller than the actuator that would be required for that size valve that we looked at for a gate valve. But I attached the stem to this stem and the actuator to operate that stem or move that stem up and move it down. And you can see that we have a spring here. The way pneumatic actuators work, you see the spring to open or spring to close, depending on where the spring is located. If the spring is on the bottom, as this one is, it's on the bottom, so air would go on top of the, the diaphragm. That means it would compress the spring. Then if I lost pressure, pneumatic pressure on top of the diaphragm, the spring would decompress or expand and so that particular, uh, depending on the configuration of the valve itself, it would open or close the valve. So spring on the bottom, when the spring decompresses or expands, it's gonna move the stem up. That means I have to have gas pressure on the top of the diaphragm to push the stem down. If the spring is on top, then that means I have to have gas pressure on the bottom of the diaphragm to move the stem up. The spring will push it down once it expands or decompresses. Now, in this particular case, I have a diaphragm. It's made from a rubber material. So it's a rubber material. Uh, air can go on the top or on the bottom, depending on how the valve is designed. Uh, this particular valve, it, it allows pressure on either side of the diaphragm. That's why I have a spring that rests on top also. So I have a spring on the bottom and I also have a spring on the top. So this particular one will allow pneumatic pressure on either side. So most likely this is a some type of flow control valve. Uh, a flow control valve actuator that will main 
maintain pressure on both sides and allow the diaphragm to float so that you're maintaining a certain amount of pressure or a certain amount of fluid flow. Now it can be used as a pressure control valve, flow control valve. Uh, this particular one doesn't appear to be just an isolation valve. Um, now isolation valves are gate valves, butterfly valves, um, but this seems to be more of a valve that's used to control pressure, control flow uh, in a system. And that's why you'll see the spring on both sides of this particular type of actuator. Now as we start to look at the internal components of this actuator, and we already looked at the diaphragm, uh, rubber material, uh, well it's a type, a type of rubber. But now we'll look at the spring. Spring, it's a pretty stiff spring. So that means it takes uh, quite a bit of force to compress it. And so that determines what our air pressure has to be going to this particular valve or valve actuator. Or it doesn't have to be air. It can be any type of pneumatic fluid. So uh, it can be any type of gas. Probably wouldn't use steam, but uh, nitrogen, uh, air can both be used uh, to operate this pneumatic actuator. Okay, for this actuator, uh, you note that this port here is the supply. So the supply pneumatic fluid will come in here. Once it's inside, it can be directed to several different locations. We see that there's a place for it to actually enter the top of the, on top of the diaphragm. But this port here, this is actually a port. There's a hole that leads from this area it leads down to here and then there's a porthole in the top as well as a porthole in the bottom that allows flow of the gas to go to the bottom of the diaphragm also so this particular this is a, a uh, I won't say complicated valve uh, but it's a little more complicated than you typically would see in the field. Normally, the actuators, pneumatic actuators, have a, a port that comes from some type of controller, goes in, it will open the valve, and or close the valve. Sometimes you'll have one that has a controller that has a feedback mechanism, and you'll learn more about this in instrumentation and control, it has a feedback mechanism that will allow the valve to control pressure or control flow the pro on the process fluid side. And they are a little more complicated, but typically they aren't all compact in the actuator. You will have a separate component that will control the feedback mechanism to uh, actually send signals to the valve actuator. That other feedback mechanism, it feeds into a pressure indicating controller or a pressure controller, a, a flow indicating controller or a flow controller and it will send signals to the valve and change the air pressure or gas pressure to the valve to allow it to move open and close or in the open close direction or to throttle it. 